Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'm standing in Bukhara and subhanAllah behind me on the right um, is the great Minara of Bukhara. It's got an amazing story. It honestly really um, had my skin crawling. And subhanAllah, we're standing, of course, in what would be hallowed ground. Uh, it's a place where our ummah uh, experienced some of its greatest triumphs and also some of its greatest losses. And I want you to understand that whatever pain the ummah is facing today, whatever difficulty you think is happening, nothing has ever been experienced by our community like what befell the ummah when the Mongols entered into this particular city and into these particular lands. And subhanAllah, uh, you know, we're in Bukhara, which is where Imam al-Bukhari was born, where he was raised for the first part of his life, where he was first educated up until his teens. And from there, he spread his knowledge and he began to travel and learn. But this was also just uh, a few generations later, uh, a place of great bloodshed. The masjid to my left wasn't the masjid that was there. In fact, the masjid that was there that was attached to this amazing minara was razed and destroyed to the ground. When Genghis Khan entered into this area, he entered for a very particular reason. He came with vengeance and hatred. And the, the emir of this region, when Genghis Khan had initially sent some envoys and wanted to elicit trade, the emir knew that it was actually a spy mission, or that's what he felt anyway. And he executed those who were sent as ambassadors. Now that was unconventional, probably in hindsight unwise. Genghis Khan, a little while later, splitting his army into three forces, came into this area and surrounded it. And the people were engaged in prayer in this very spot behind me. And I'll show you the well where they made their wudu and subhanAllah, where they were martyred and thrown in. And as they were engaged in their prayer, he entered into this place on his horse, mounted into the masjid. And the Imam was leading the salah. And he began with his foot to kick the Imam to gain his attention. And the Imam ignored him. And this infuriated Genghis Khan to the point that he ordered everyone in the masjid and its surroundings to be butchered and that they be decapitated and their bodies be thrown in the place of wudu where they make their wudu for salah from. And then he turned his attention to the minara that is behind me. He ordered that every building, every structure in this city be destroyed, but he left this minara behind. This has been standing since the ninth century, about 50 to 100 years after Imam al-Bukhari's life. It's been there for that long. And Genghis Khan did not harm it. He harmed many of the other minaras in all the other surrounding cities, including Al Imam al Tirmidhi's city and other places. But this one was left behind. Now there's folklore that says, you know, he had to look up and his helmet fell and he picked up his hat and he said, you know, I've never bent down and prostrated for anything. So I'm going to leave it as something that I'm in awe of. And, you know, our guide and other people, and you can read in the history books, they say, no, it was actually military strategy. Genghis Khan was a genius. This was the highest point in this surrounding area. He could see his enemies gathering from a distance, the dust of their horses from far away. So he had his centuries up at the top. But what I want to explain to you is how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr is, how the fate is predestined by Allah. And as we transport, we're going to walk over to there, inshallah. My brother, he's going to follow me. And we're going to walk over there. And I want to show you the inscription that is found on the minara. Now, you can, you can um, actually um, come and see some of the magnificent detail that's found. Of course, you, you know, you gaze at this entrance to the masjid. It's an amazing, amazing entrance. But that masjid was in existence at the time of uh, Genghis Khan. What was there was all destroyed. And this was rebuilt as a, as a monument to the martyrs, as a way to say Islam was always here and it'll always be here. And it doesn't matter what happens, it is something that befalls us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we come to the minara, I want you to know that it's well over uh, 50, feet, uh, 50 meters in length. It's an amazing, magnificent structure, and it took many years for it to be built. In fact, when the Khalifa and the Amir at the time wanted it to be built, he, he said whoever uh, is going to take on that challenge will be rewarded, but whoever fails at it, their life is on the line. 
And subhanAllah, it took many years for just the foundation stone to be set. So I want to show you the very first inscription. And I checked with uh, you know our tour guide and others and people of the history of this land. And the question that I asked was a very simple question. Are these Quranic inscriptions after Genghis Khan? Were they placed after or were they placed before? And everyone says, no, they were before. These were things that were there when Genghis Khan was here. These are the same Quranic inscriptions that were there. And I'll take over for a second. I want to zoom in on the verses, subhanAllah, that were chosen for this amazing monument. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The beginning of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and this is the verse that they chose for this monument. If Allah seeks harm for you, none shall, can prevent it or remove it. La ilaha illahu. There's no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا كاشف له إلا هو. No one other than Allah can remove that harm and prevent it. وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for you goodness and contentment and happiness, there's none that can prevent it also from you. يُصِيبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blesses whom he wills from his servants in the way and try them in the way who he wants. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the all-forgiving, the all-merciful. Uh, all merciful. Uh, it's such an amazing ayah to have been chosen um, to decorate this amazing, amazing monument. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. The foresight of it being uh, placed might have been because they were worried about this minara falling down. And they were worried about losing their life if it wasn't built correctly. But the reality is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr would descend upon this place and they would be tried with one of the greatest trials that our ummah faces. And I want to share with you, inshallah, just a few quick points um, of benefit. The first point of benefit is subhanAllah from the very same lineage and grandchildren of Genghis Khan would be people who would inhabit this land and say La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. And I want you to know my dear brother, my dear sister, that as dark and as difficult and as hard as life gets, it will always have a day where the sun will rise in its morning. There will always come light after darkness, there will always come ease and ease after a single hardship. And whatever your struggle is, know that there are others who have struggled harder. And whatever loss you've sustained, there's others who have sustained more. And know, as this ayah tells us, that the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of our prosperity as well as our, our, our adver, adversity. The second lesson that I want you to take is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves signs for us as human beings and leaves things for us to uncover and to, to rely on that lead us back to Him. And part of the aim of you know uh, our tour, the heritage tour, and coming to visit this place is to be inspired by it. And subhanAllah, it's such an inspiration to have been uh, able to witness this, uh, what I believe is a miracle for the Muslim Ummah to regain its faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that all is not lost and happiness can come after sorrow and elevation and conquest and victory and success can come after loss and devastation. And this is a sign to all of our brothers from one side of the east to the west. Don't ever give up on your faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who is your provider and mine as he was for others before us. The third and final thing that I say to you is travel. SubhanAllah. Um, you know, I could have read about this probably in a book or seen a video on it as you are now, but I invite you inshallah to take steps and journeys that will solidify your faith in Allah and inspire you as wallahi I've been, I've been inspired today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you ease and comfort wherever you are and join us all together in His mercy and in the mercy of uh, his his love subhanahu wa ta'ala wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh